How's it going everybody? It's Warren and welcome back to my channel, The Cosmic Wonder. Yesterday we had a very big bomb dropped on us. Deadline reported that Jonathan Majors has been cast for a role in Ant-Man 3 and not just any role, a very big role. Deadline went on to elaborate saying that they believe that the role that he had been cast for is Kang the Conqueror. And as the day went by and people checked with their sources, a few people were able to confirm that he has been cast indeed for the role of Kang the Conqueror. So it looks like Kang the Conqueror is officially coming to the MCU, making his debut in Ant-Man 3. However, there is more than just Kang the Conqueror that waits for us in Ant-Man 3. As it turns out, this may be one of the biggest Marvel movies ever. And yes, I am talking about Ant-Man 3. I know a lot of people thought the first two Ant-Man films were a little bit underwhelming, but as it turns out, Ant-Man 3 is going to be an extremely important MCU film. And in this video, we'll break down who Kang is, how he's going to come into Ant-Man 3, and how we could also see the young Avengers, MODOK, and the Fantastic Four in Ant-Man 3 as well. But first, if you're new, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any MCU news and so you can enter this week's giveaway for a chance to win a Thanos Funko Pop. All you gotta do is subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment down below. So a few people mentioned yesterday that they don't exactly know too much about Kang. And don't worry, I'll explain, because not only is he a very important character in the Marvel Comics universe, but he's also going to be a huge character coming to the MCU who will most likely be in more than just Ant-Man 3. Kang is a major big bad that we're getting in the MCU. So here's what you need to know about Kang and how he's going to be introduced in Ant-Man 3. The first thing that you need to know about Kang is that he's a master of time travel. Kang has a pretty complicated story, but it's not that hard to simplify it. Before he was Kang the Conqueror, he was Nathaniel Richards, a 31st century scholar and a descendant of Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic of the Fantastic Four, and of course we'll dive into that in just a bit. Nathaniel ends up discovering time travel technology which was illegal to use in his time, but it was created by the Fantastic Four. He ends up traveling back in time to ancient Egypt and becomes the pharaoh Rama Tut, and his plan was to have En Saba Nur, the mutant who would go on to become Apocalypse, be his heir. But his plan was cut short as the Fantastic Four, who ended up in his timeline, managed to stop him. This infuriates Nathaniel Richards, then he goes forward in time to the 20th century where he meets Doctor Doom. He would go on to design armor based off of Doctor Doom's armor and he goes on to call himself the Scarlet Centurion. And he ends up taking the Avengers and pinning them against their alternate reality selves. He plans to get rid of the Avengers and take the timeline for himself, but the Avengers manage to force him from their timeline. He then planned to go back home to the 31st century, but he ends up overshooting it by a thousand years. and he discovers a war-torn earth and they use weapons that they no longer understand so it makes it simple for him to conquer the planet. He conquers the planet and many other planets across the galaxy and he dubs himself Kang the Conqueror. However, his own earth is dying so he decides to get a newer, younger earth and that leads him to our main timeline. Now over the years in the comics, Kang has gone through many different timelines devising many different plans to conquer many of these timelines. There are multiple alternate versions of Kang in the comics and will most likely be in the MCU because of Doctor Strange in the multiverse of madness. But time travel is basically who Kang is and the Avengers opened up time travel in Avengers Endgame through the quantum realm. And this is where Ant-Man 3 comes in and how he's going to debut in Ant-Man 3. Not a lot of people give Ant-Man enough credit in Avengers Endgame. He is the one who brought the idea of time travel and the ability to do it to the Avengers. Sure Tony was kind of working on it before but he was only able to complete it with the help of Scott Lang and the Quantum Realm. If it wasn't for Scott getting stuck inside of the Quantum Realm, time travel would never be possible. And Ant-Man 3 is going to be about the Quantum Realm. In Ant-Man and the Wasp, we discovered a major city inside of the Quantum Realm, and it was Marvel themselves who told us to look for it. They said that it's going to play a major part in the future of the MCU, and we all thought it was going to appear in Avengers Endgame, but it didn't. But now we know it's because they were saving it for Ant-Man 3. Now, this city inside of the Quantum Realm is widely believed to be Chronopolis. It has a dome over it much like it does in the comics and as we can see it's a very big city much like it is in the comics. And Chronopolis is Kang's base. It's his city. It's his home. 
From this city is where he rules every one of his realms that he has taken over. And the fact that it sits inside of the quantum realm makes perfect sense. The quantum realm sort of exists in between time. From the quantum realm, you can go to any time period that you want. So for somebody who takes over timelines like Kang, it's a perfect base. Now, since Kang has been here and he has a city of Chronopolis, he definitely has noticed the Avengers using time travel in Avengers Endgame. And this is how he's going to come into play in Ant-Man 3. If, after the events of Avengers Endgame, there is going to be anybody who is going to be exploring time travel through the Quantum Realm, it's definitely going to be Scott Lang, Hank Pym, Janet Van Dyne, and Hope. Especially after Janet Van Dyne, after being trapped inside of the Quantum Realm for many, many years, came out with basically having powers. So this is something that they're definitely going to be exploring in Ant-Man 3. And while doing so, they will run into Kang. And since Kang will most likely be in the main timeline, there's a very very good chance that Kang will follow them out of the quantum realm into the main MCU timeline. And this is where he will start to have his beef with the Avengers if he hasn't already at some different point in time. But this would be a perfect opportunity to start Kang's hatred for the Avengers. Since Kang already has Chronopolis set up inside of the quantum realm, that means he's most likely conquered many different timelines. But Scott Lang and the Avengers using time travel in Avengers Endgame could have screwed up some timelines for him because we definitely know that they altered some different timelines. So this is where Kang will start his hatred towards the Avengers. Now, as I mentioned, there's a big Young Avengers connection here as well. It's already been rumored and widely speculated that Ant-Man 3 is also going to set up the Young Avengers. And the fact that Kang the Conqueror is going to be in Ant-Man 3 pretty much makes it official that the Young Avengers will be set up because a younger version of Kang the Conqueror is Iron Lad. You see, Iron Lad is actually the person who forms the Young Avengers. Nathaniel Richards gets hospitalized while he's a kid, and the future Kang the Conqueror tries to prevent this event from happening, and this is where the young Nathaniel Richards finds out about his future self. But the young Nathaniel Richards is terrified of Kang the Conqueror, who he knows he will become. So he tries to escape his destiny, and he ends up stealing his future self's advanced armor and travels back in time to the past, and he forms the Young Avengers to try and stop Kang. And they're actually successful. Kang ends up dying, but destroying his future self doesn't exactly go the way that young Nathaniel Richards had hoped for. By killing Kang, the ramifications to his own timeline are severely affected. All of the Avengers die, and the young Avengers, Wiccan and Hulkling, end up disappearing. Iron Lad realizes that the only way to prevent this from happening is to go back in time and become Kang the Conqueror. Before he goes back in time, he asks his fellow Young Avengers to forgive him for his future actions. He then kisses Stature goodbye and goes back and becomes Kang. So not only does Nathaniel Richards go on to become Kang the Conqueror, but he also goes on to become Iron Lad. And as you heard me just mention, he does end up having a relationship with Stature, Scott Lang's daughter, Cassie Lang. And this is the up for the Young Avengers. Clearly Ant-Man and some others are going to run into Kang in Ant-Man 3. So it would make sense for Iron Lad to come back in time in an attempt to try and stop Kang, his future self. And that timeline that he would go to is our timeline. Here is when he will do what he does in the comics, establish the Young Avengers. At this point in time in the movie, we would have him who would be Iron Lad, Cassie Lang would be Stature, and at this point in time, Wiccan and Speed, the two twin boys of Wanda and Vision, will be grown up as well and they'll be part of the the Young Avengers. Then we have Kate Bishop from the Hawkeye series, and it is rumored that Hulkling is going to be a part of the Young Avengers as well. And not to mention Miss Marvel, who's getting her very own TV show, and America Chavez, who is supposed to be in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So as it seems, Ant-Man 3 is going to introduce Kang and the Young Avengers, but it could also introduce the Fantastic Four. As I mentioned before, Nathaniel Richards is a descendant of Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic. And there's a lot of speculation going on right now, and there has been for a pretty long time, that the Fantastic Four are stuck inside of the Quantum Realm, much like they got stuck inside of the Negative Zone in the comics. And perhaps the reason that they're stuck inside of the Quantum Realm is because Kang has actually captured them and is holding them in Chronopolis. So if Ant-Man and the others that are with him in Ant-Man 3 manage to defeat Kang, this could release the Fantastic Four 
teleport and bring them into our timeline. This will most likely be at the very end of the movie if it happens or in a post credit scene, but it will be a setup for the Fantastic Four nonetheless. And considering the connection between Nathaniel Richards and Reed Richards, it is a perfect opportunity. Now, a lot of fans were kind of disappointed when they heard Kang was going to be the villain of Ant-Man 3 because they wanted MODOK to be the main villain. Well, just because Kang's coming doesn't actually mean that MODOK isn't coming as well. You see, Marvel is doing things a little bit differently now. They can't do the exact same thing they did for the Infinity Saga. They have to be bigger. They have to be better. And it looks like their big bads aren't going to only be in one film. They're going to be through multiple films. And Kang and MODOK aren't one movie villains anyways. They're big villains. But the biggest thing that we have to keep in mind is that in Ant-Man and the Wasp, they mentioned a mysterious benefactor. Now this mysterious benefactor slash buyer who we heard about in Ant-Man and the Wasp was never revealed, but we can't expect him to be revealed in Ant-Man 3. And if Kang is in Chronopolis inside of the Quantum Realm, he is most likely not the buyer. This benefactor could be MODOK. Kang could be the main villain, but there could be a side villain, which is MODOK, and they could set him up to be an even bigger villain throughout other MCU films. So for those of you worried about MODOK not appearing in Ant-Man 3, it doesn't necessarily mean that he's not going to. And if Marvel Studios wants to bump up the Ant-Man franchise a few different levels, this would be the perfect opportunity. Putting Kang the Conqueror, some of the Young Avengers, Iron Lad, MODOK, and possibly the Fantastic Four in one movie would definitely do the trick. And I think that all of us fans would definitely freak out if this were to happen. So let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. Would you absolutely freak out if you saw this happen? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the latest MCU news. For other giveaways, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.